the game of Fantasy High, the thing that's supposed to be fun about it is what if John Hughes ran a game of D&D? What if we had our fellowship forged not in Rivendell, but in like Evanston, Illinois? There's so much doom and gloom in the culture at large right now. And then this game is having this very explosive, but almost like quiet renaissance or resurgence. It's all the thrill of games of chance with the dice rolling aspect, but you're rolling dice based on your choices. So there's skill and expertise involved. It's like the same way that poker combines luck and skill. We've been a little bit forced, but in a fun, creative way of building our sets um, in the middle of an office building. So uh, it looks a little cramped like this, but on screen, just like our other shows, I feel pretty good about it looking good on camera. This is the, the byproduct of a really fun, creative process because the original idea was to first of all try to build a set on the rank rope set. And then we were like, no, no, let's let's take this space over. So we had ideas to make like a dungeon type room and then uh, uh, Sam Reich, I think, came in and just blew all that up and said, you know what, what if, uh, what if they were inside of a dome? And uh, so here we are, inside of a dome. The idea of having the polyhedral dome as the sort of centerpiece of our set is an homage to the sort of polyhedral dice that make up a lot of these role-playing games. And also having this kind of crystal cave that can go from a frosty fantasy feeling to kind of a more Fortress of Solitude sci-fi vibe allows us the freedom to move from genre to genre as we see fit. Of the shows that we're doing, I don't know that we're doing a show here at College Humor right now or for Dropout that lets you see the cast as who they are this much, which is funny because it's gonna be all wizards and monsters and shit like that. But really the whole fun thing about D&D is within the context of this fantasy role playing, you actually get to know your friends for who they really are. They're, you know, reacting as a character, but it's them. It's them making choices and being surprised and having a reaction to something unexpected on an adventure. Gorgug is a half-orc who was raised by two little cute gnomes, uh, and so he has a little bit of uh, confusion with his identity where he's uh, a little uncomfortable in his own skin. Pig is pretty angsty, mad at the world, typical teen stuff. Oh, she's also plays the bass guitar and the drums and is going through like a metal phase. When I am like walking to get here and stuff, I listen to a lot of heavy metal <laughs> to get amped. Riz Gak is a goblin rogue, sort of a uh, goblin Veronica Mars, if you will. He's a little bit of an amateur private detective. He's trying to solve the disappearance of some, some of the missing girls at the Fate Fort Adventuring Academy. Adine Abenant is a high elf who comes from like a very old elven family and her father is actually the elven ambassador to Spire and all of her family are very 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 type A but she failed the entrance exam into the very exclusive magical academy because she had a panic attack. I play Kristen Applebee's no relation with the chain restaurant. She is a cleric and she's like super religious she's like a church camp kid really believes in their version. It's kind of like Christianity, but there it's like a helioic faith. So I've never actually played this game before. I'm loving it. I'm definitely a nerd. Fabian is just a real daddy's boy from the, uh, whichever side of the tracks is the one where you're just filthy rich and have never had to work or do anything strenuous in your whole life. People might not realize just the insane amount of work that goes to keeping things from us and then making really cool stuff that's kind of reacting to our <laughs> stupid conversations. We ordered minis from companies all around the world, Poland and Singapore and all these places. The UK, Berlin, various parts of the United States. So when you're doing anything that's internationally, you have the time difference. And we were on such a tight timeline. We had to shift our schedule and order things in the middle of the night, our time, so it would be on first thing on the deck for them in the morning. We worked with a local 3D printing company called Hollywood 3D, and we created original miniatures that were 3D models specifically for this campaign. Every other episode is a battle episode, and we made a battle set for each of those. We were able to figure it out with Brennan in pre-production. His job is 
to get the players there during the show. For the really specific pieces that were really creative, and we had a few of those, we had to just go in to a designer and be like, here's the idea we have, or here's a sketch that we have. Can you make this for us? The role-playing game community is super excited to be a part of this show. We hope you enjoyed this look at our behind the scenes footage from filming the first season of Dimension 20. If you want to catch even more episodes, head over to Dropout right now and sign up. And remember, Dropout is now available in 120 countries worldwide. Head over to dropout.tv and start your